Shalom, Kahaloyim La, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai Bashim, Wahweh Kadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone who rule well for teaching me the truth and salutations to the hopeful elect. All right, to you brothers out there across the globe pushing the truth with all righteousness and sincerity. And to you true sincere uh, listeners, man. All right, you men and women, all right, of the so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans who um who hearken unto the you know the words of um the real men of the Lord, you know, starting with the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone and brothers who are uh, you know, put forth such work. All right, Shalom. This is going to be a uh, part two slash finale of um, <clears throat> excuse me, the history of Albany, and um, I'm gonna start off with the book of Ecclesiastes chapter ten, verse six. It says, "Folly is set in great dignity, and the rich sit in low place." Right. So in the previous video, I was talking about how you know, uh, you know, Gad Rubin, the so-called Native Americans, the Seminole Indians, was um. Was was conquered over here, okay, in the uh, in the northernmost parts of 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 uh, the U.S. All right, over here, Albany, you know, all places like Albany, Buffalo, Syracuse, Schenectady, and so on and so forth. All right, because this was this place was was built. All right, this place was built on Native American territory. It was it was a, it was it was hundreds of tribes over here, man. All right. And those are our brothers, and they were speaking, they call it the Algonquin language, but it was really Hebrew. Once again, Columbus came over here with, with Hebrew interpreters, all right? And the Dutch and the French and the Spanish, you know, these 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 Europeans, all right, these these, you know, uh people of the caucus, these Caucasians, these damn uh, little pink devils, they came over here, all right. And they they started ruling over our people, man. They they pit our people against each other, which they was already having, you know, tribal wars amongst each other. All right, which goes back to the curses. All right, a, a, a man, a man's eye being evil toward his brother. All right, but Esau came over here and made it worse. All right, and ended up pitting our brothers even even worse, you know, against each other, you know, by manipulating the um the field, so to speak. All right. But this is Ecclesiastes 10. I'm going to start at verse 6. It says, Folly is set in great dignity, and the rich sit in low place. I've seen servants upon horses, and princes walking as servants upon the earth. All right, so there you go, man. The scriptures are, I've seen servants upon horses, and princes walking as servants upon the uh, earth. All right, not, and, you know, not to mention, not to mention, you also had uh, the statue. Excuse me. The Theodore Roosevelt statue. Statue removed, okay? From uh, New York City, which which um you 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 that's Native American territory as well. Okay? All along the, the East Coast, really the, the I mean the whole America's, you know, Native American, you know, uh so called Native American territory, Gad Rubin. And um uh Issachar, all right. But but what man? I, I, I'm speaking mostly along you know the east side. Once again, it was, it was a lot of tribes over here, man. All right. It says the American Museum of Natural History in New York City quietly began removing a controversial statue of former President Theodore Roosevelt on Tuesday night in the final chapter of a saga that has stretched for nearly a year and a half. By Thursday, only scaffolding. And tarp remained. Okay, so they, they they removed the statue because because what? Because of America's shameful and violent history of giving our people hell, which there is no hiding it. Okay, you you can't you can't just remove statues uh, statues and landmarks like these and expect people to just automatically forget. All right, these Gadites, these Reubenites, okay, these Judites. You know, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, we know and we will always remember what the hell you did to us and we're going to get you back. All right. But this is this was the statue. And this this statue is actually what the scripture means. All right. So you got Theodore Roosevelt on a horse. OK, going back to the scripture, verse seven is I have seen servants upon horses. OK, and the reason why Esau Edom is called a servant is because he's lower than us. All right, even though he was the firstborn pursuing the Genesis 25 and 25, all right, the scriptures say before that, the elder, he, uh, uh, the Lord said to Rebecca, the elder shall serve the younger, the elder shall serve the younger. So Esau is a servant, all right, 
And just to prove that, just because I'll come back to the scripture, just to prove that, um, let me see. I know it's one of Job. Yep. Job chapter 30, verse one. And I want to, I want to see what that word says for young Job 30 and one. It says, but now they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I would have disdained to have set with the dogs of my flock. Yeah, let's talk about Esau, Edom. Okay. Now, when you go into that word younger, I want to see what it says. I never went into this word. So just bear with me. All right. Now, the Hebrew word is mun, mun. All right. It says from, from out of, on account of, let me see, uh. Let me see. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really seeing anything for it. Okay. But, but the way. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just go back and stuff like that. But the way, the way I learned the scripture. Okay. When you call someone young, are you, you're calling them, you're calling them immature. All right, which is exactly what Esau Edom is. All right, Esau Edom, he's 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 likened unto a child. He's immature. All right, that's why he throws tantrums when he, whenever he don't get his way. Which his biggest tantrum is coming up when Yahweh Shai come back. All right, who the world calls Jesus Christ, who's a dark skinned man, and pull him out of power. All right, but yeah, it says, but now they that are younger than I have me in derision. All right, and these 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 devils do have us in derision. All right, they do they do have us. You know, um, uh, uh, they, they are mocking us, if you will. Okay. And we're in a low place, you know, as, as, as the scriptures say, all right. In verse six in the rich sit in low place. Yeah. Cause we're rich in spirit and we're sitting in a low place, which is America at right? the land of our captivity. All right. By the way, the land of our final captivity. Okay. Verse seven, I have seen servants upon horses. All right. Once again, Esau, Edom is a servant. I look at Genesis, the 25th chapter, you know, the elder shall serve the younger. I have seen servants upon horses. Okay. So going back to the picture, there's the, the that servant, Theodore Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt upon a horse and princes walking as servants upon the earth and princes. All right. You, you got, you got Judah on one side. And you got Gad on the other side, man. Okay. The scriptures say what? In Jeremiah, uh, what is it? 1533, Judah and Ephraim, Ephraim representing the northern tribe, also synonymous with Joseph. All right. Judah and Ephraim were oppressed together. All right. Matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and uh, pull it. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 33. It says, thus saith the Lord Yahweh of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. Oh, Salaki, it was the children of Israel. All right. Israel, you know, represents the uh, the, the, the nine tribes. OK, the, uh, the so-called Latinos and Native Americans, because like I said, is Issachar was over here as well, you know. Um, be before before Columbus and the rest of them came over. Yeah, therefore. So like it, thus saith the Lord Yahweh of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together and all that took them captives, held them fast. They refused to let them go. And, and that's what's going on right now. They're refusing to let us go, man. OK. Even though it doesn't, you know, literally look like this, you know, out for public display, but we're still we're still in this um in this uh, in this in this position of life. All right. We're still we're still low. All right. But that was um that was pretty much the point on that. Now going back to the article. Well, excuse me, I didn't I, I didn't go to an article yet. But um going back to the scripture, Ecclesiastes 10 and 7. All right, I've seen servants upon horses and princes walking to servants upon the earth. Verse 8: He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it, and whoso breaketh the hedge, a serpent shall bite him. Yeah, and that and yeah, and that, that serpent is representing okay the the the, the conquering all right, of, of Esau Edom. 
All right, by, by the Israelites, man, because what did this devil do? He 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 he's digging a pit for himself just to fall into it. Okay. And that pit, that pit that he's digging, that he's further digging, is the oppression of our people. All right? But but he's gonna fall into that trap as well. Once again, when Yahweh Shah, who the world calls Jesus Christ, come back. All right, so his pit all right, is his rap sheet of all of the crimes against the Israelites, all of the atrocities, you know, all of the uh, uh, un, 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 unjust laws, all of the unrighteous decrees that, that he proposed, you know, ag against us, all of the treaties he's, he's broken, all right, he set a trap up for himself to fall into, man, okay, it says, and whoso breaketh an hedge, a serpent shall bite him, all right, and what, he, he broke that hedge, and once again, the serpent is about to bite. All right, and it's, it's going to be toxic, man. Like adder's poison, <laughs> you know? Like adder's poison, man. It's, it's going to be extremely venomous. It's going to be very venomous, man. All right, go, going into Esau Edom's upcoming captivity. All right? And proof that he dug a pit, and that pit is all... Uh, um, the atrocities committed against our people. I'll pull this real quick and then I'll jump into the article. You know? Toucheth you. Zechariah 2 and 8. For thus saith the Lord Yahweh of hosts, after the glory he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that toucheth you touch of the apple of his eye all right so anybody who touches israel all right yahweh's treasure the heavenly father's treasure touches the apple of his eye all right so a, a, a precious ornament because we are precious we are peculiar people to yahweh bashim yahweh shai all right and, and what all of these nations put their hands on us to destroy us all right to, to bring us out of power so we could be their slaves you know what well, other nations wanted us to be their slaves and under and under the, um and have us under them okay but esau edom wants to completely eradicate us all right which which is not going to happen by any means you know but once again looking at the history of albany the history of america in general but you know folk uh, tuning in on you know albany and surrounding areas <coughs> you see what this damn devil has done to our people okay so I'm going to get this article. I wanted to get this yesterday, but I was just like, you know what? I'm going to just go ahead and do a part two because it's, it's a lot to speak on, you know, through the spirit. It says, uh, friends of Albany history, uh, telling the stories of Albany. Oh, excuse me. That's not the title. All right. The title is 1626, the massacre in Albany's Lincoln Park. All right. And this was posted on December 7th. I mean, excuse me, October 7th, 2018 by Albany Muskrat. It says the city of Albany is proposing to put a sewage treatment facility in the upper section of Lincoln Park. It's needed to address several long-standing problems related in part to the Beaver Creek that runs under the park. Other changes will be made to the park's landscape. We thought this was an opportunity to tell you about an incident in that area almost 400 years ago that had a major impact on our history. It could have changed the fate of our city. And, and that's exactly what it did. All right. Those 400 years ago. Because look at this place now. Okay. It's, 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 it's what? It's, it's built, it's built on, on the blood of our people. This land is built on the blood of our people. All right. These cities built on the blood of our people. You know? As a matter of fact, just to pull it up real quick, because I'm uh, uh, the, the campsite, you know, my campsite that I'm at. All right. Let me see if I could get a good. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just get that picture. Yeah, I'll just use, I'll just use that one. So, so I can't, I can't. In this area, yeah, yeah, there is a citizens bank over there. There is a hotel over there, and things of that nature. But this is called the Tenek Plaza. All right, now the Tenek Plaza was built was built by Dutch settlers, which in the previous video 
I was going into. Okay, this was this was uh, 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 initiated and in, well, it was built by our people. But you know, uh, um, um, you know, the Dutch laid out the blueprint for us to build it, if you will. All right, but yeah, this this is pretty much the area I teach in. So yeah, like I said, you got the hotel. You know, that's that's a whole plaza, man. Okay, but that's not really important right now. But once again, this we we built. Well, it is important because we built it, man. Okay, and, and this is wickedness because this shit ain't supposed to be here. All right, but going back to the article, the second paragraph, it says, first, you have to imagine how the park looked in the early 1600s. Today, we see mostly manicured lawns, pretty shrubbery and trees and gentle rolling hills. When the Dutch first came here, it was a wilderness of fierce and awesome beauty. Okay, so this place was beautiful before the Dutch touched it is exactly what this article is saying. All right. This place was beautiful before before Esau Edom put his 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 little pink hands on it, man. All right. Before he chopped down all the trees and he started forcing the animals out of their habitations. OK, before he forced us to, to build these damn concrete tar roads. You know, it says it says when the Dutch first came here. It says it was it says it was a wilderness of fierce and awesome beauty. OK, it was heavily forested. Like when you look at that movie, James Cameron's Avatar, the first one, the first one and the one that recently came out, it looked just like that. OK, so to speak, it was it says it was heavily forested <clears throat> with a deep ravine running much of the length of the park, a rapid flowing creek known alternatively as Buttermilk Creek, then the Beaver Kill, and today, Beaver Creek. And Buttermilk Falls. The falls were described in 1828 as a charming spot with a foaming cascade that plunged 30 feet into a deep gorge. Yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was pretty It was pretty damn big, man. You know? And there's still, of course, there's still places like, like this, you know, and um, all throughout upstate New York, but you you got to drive. <clears throat> you got to drive if you don't live around there. You got to drive or you got to travel pretty damn far to get over there. It says uh, Fort Orange, the trading outpost. And, and, you know, this goes back to that scripture. And um, I believe it was Mike. I bought it out yesterday. I'll pull it again. Let me see if I'm correct. Micah chapter 2, verse 1. No, it was verse 2, you know. Micah 2 and 2, I'll read it again. It says, and they covet fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. So there you go, man. All right. You saw Edom in the, the scriptures. And I, I'm not going to pull it again, but the scriptures also say, woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. All right. This land does not belong to him. This land does not belong to Esau Edom. He didn't discover it. There was already inhabitants there. All right, they were Hebrew Israelites from the tribe of Gad, Reuben, and Issachar. Okay. Now it says Fort Orange, the trading outpost of the Dutch West Indies Co., was established on Broadway. Well, I'm, I'm not going to read all of that. Let me see. Um, Yeah, here it is. It says it was here that they were ambushed by a party of Mohawks, part of the Iroquois Confederacy. <clears throat> the, the group from the fort included Daniel von Creekenbeek. There are several variant spellings. A number of soldiers, two of whom were Portuguese and Mohican Indians, Algonquin tribe. There's no indication of the number of Mohawks or, Mo or Mohicans killed. All right. So it, it, and it could have been a lot. All right, it, it could have been a lot because once again, you, you already had uh, 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 Gad and Rubin, so-called Native Americans, all right, in these tribes, they had they had tribal wars, well, wars amongst each other for territory and expansion, a territorial expansion. It says the ambush was revenge against the colonists for siding with the Mohicans and helping them attack the Mohawks. Van Creekenbeek's decision to join with the Mohicans was a departure from the previous neutrality of the Dutch in Fort Orange that had ensured good relations with the Iroquois. All right, so there you go. It was an ambush. It was an ambush against the colonists for siding with the Mohicans, man. So what? You had Esau against Esau, 
And you got Jake against Jake, man. It's it's confusion. All right? That's why we call this damn devil the harbinger of death. All right? Because everywhere he 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 steps his crummy little fucking pink feet. All right? There's there's going to be war, there's going to be bloodshed, there's going to be malice, there's going to be turmoil. Okay? Matter of fact, let me get this real quick. Maybe it's spelled with an O. Zechariah 11 and 5. It says, Who possess, whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. And their own shepherds pity them not. Okay, so so there you go, man. That's that's what these damn devils did to us, man. All right, they slid us, and they and, and, and today they're holding themselves not guilty. Okay, or they'll come up with some some little facetious apology, you know, which God is not truly. You got You got. You still got a lot of people out. You got a lot of so-called Native Americans out here who's not buying that that buying that that's buying that damn apology, man. All right, because because what Esau eat them. And this is what this is what's meant by where it says to hold themselves not guilty, okay? Be, because because what they say, oh, you know, I wasn't there, I didn't do that to your people, and ah ah ah, and so on and so forth. But it's just like, look, when you look at reincarnation, we all of us are our um uh, uh forefathers, our past forefathers, man. All right, we j we're just in a different time frame. We're in a different generation now. All right. And, and it says what? And they that sell them say, blessed be the Lord for I am rich. All right, going into that whole 10 8 plaza. All right. The whole infrastructure, you know, um, uh, uh, uh meditated upon by, by the Dutch. You know? These damn devils, they they still living off of our people today. All right, well, what is it? Generational wealth? Look at the Illuminati, man. All right, these people, these are the same people who still living off of our people today, man. All right. They they owe us a lot, man. They owe us they owe us a whole lot and, and they're going to pay it back. They're going to pay it back. As a matter of fact, This is Exodus 21 and 16. It says, "And he that stealeth a man and selleth him." <laughs> there you go. "And he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death." All right, so this, and this is what happened when what? These colonists and these French and these Spanish, all right, made these treaties with, with our people and then later on sold them off and, and threw them in uh, um, uh, a boarding house, uh, boarding schools and so on and so forth, man. They, they stole us and they sold us, man. All right, shipping us to different parts of the world. That's why you got Jake all over the place. You know, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, all right? But that was the point on that. They 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 disturbed the peace. They disturbed the peace, man. All right. It says a contemporary account says that the Dutch force was met with a barrage of arrows. Von Kriekenbeek and several men were killed. Three men escaped. One man was wounded, but survived by swimming to safety. The most horrific reports of the ambush focus on time in Buenz. He was said to have been roasted alive. Oops, that's odd, oh, man. That's judgment. He was said to have been roasted alive and then eaten with the Mohawks carrying some of his limbs back to their camps as symbols of their victory. That's wicked, man. You see, you see, Jake, you got a lot of our people who 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 act like the damn heathen as well, man, because cannibalism is against the scriptures. All right. Look at the Levitical law. We're not supposed to be eating humans. OK, but but that's judgment on, on the Tim and Bowen's individual. As a matter of fact, <laughs> Let me see if I can find that find that character. That's judgment, man. Tim and did I spell it right? Bowens. Let me see. Is he in here? No, those those are those are women. Yeah, it, it, it's, it, I, I guess I guess he he um it, he, it was too early for pitches and uh, recording or whatever the case. But that damn, that's judgment, man. That's judgment, you know. But um, now nah, we're not supposed to be humans. And anyways, 
It says, legend has it, and here it is, you got Esau Edom as the biggest damn cannibal. All right, right along with, with these Hamites, you got a, you got a tribe in Africa, because that's that's who Ham is, the so-called Africans. All right, they, they got a tribe where they actually eat people. Like, they commit cannibalism, okay? But um, continuing on, I'm right here. It says, legend has it that he was singled out by the Mohawk for the great courage he demonstrated as a brave warrior during the ambush. The four men killed were buried near where they fell. You know? Yeah, and that was that was pretty much the point on that, man. You know, that was pretty much the point on that. Um let me see, uh if I had anything else in my arsenal. Nah, I I I I pretty much hit all the points, man. You know? But 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 retribution. All right, retribution is coming. Okay, everything that these damn devils have have done have done to us, you know, the mind militia, uh, mind manipulation, the slavery, everything that these that these the the the, the poison and the food and the water, everything these damn devils did, they're going to have to pay for. It, all right, because the scriptures say this. I'll put this as well. I actually didn't go to the scripture in a while, you know, but the the spirit is hot right now, man. Um. Ecclesiastes 3 and 15, it says, that which have been is now, and that which is to be hath already been, and the most I require of that which is past. Okay, so these 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 so-called white people saying, you know, hey, let's just forget about the past and, you know, let's intermingle and intermarry and, and do all of this other stuff and everything is fine now and we apologize and all this other shit. All right. That ain't nothing but a damn trick. That, that ain't nothing but a trap. All right. That's why the scriptures say what? Never trust thine enemy for like his iron restive. So this is as this is wickedness, man. All right. Because what? He's just going to get worse and worse and worse over time. And he has. And he is. OK. But the most High requires everything that happens that happened in the past. Again, I got the scripture in Exodus, the 21st chapter. You know, you stole a man and, 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 and you sold him. All right. You, you're supposed to be put to death. All right, so the, the, the whole nation of Edom, the whole nation of Edom is going to be put to death. All right, and proving that, I'm going to close off in the book of Obadiah. <clears throat> I forgot where it was exactly. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Obadiah, verse 8, it says, Shall I not in that day save the Lord, Yahweh, even destroy the wise men out of Edom? And understanding out of the Mount of Esau, yeah, these these top scientists and and um um these archaeologists, all right, these thirteen these thirteen Illuminati bloodline families, you know the Rockefellers, the the Rothschilds, the Bilderbergs, the Duponts, all of these guys, okay, the Lord says he's gonna destroy the wise men out of the the, the Mount of Esau, Edom, you know, verse nine. It says in it also in the first video in the first video, okay. Uh, um um also when you see Mount Seir, Mount Seir also represents Esau Edom, all right. Verse nine it says, "In thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end." Yeah, the the the, the military, the army, the, these Marines, all right, with the bald faces. It says to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. All right, these damn devils. Is going to be cut off by slaughter. The scriptures say the Lord will have war with Amalek for generations and generations, man. All right. And Amalek's ultimate end is that is that he perishes forever as well. That's another scripture. All right. That's going to be Amalek's Imalak. All right. Imalak. All right. The, the, the head tribe of Esau. All right. Those damn gutter rats in the land today. You know, with the damn pigtails for uh, 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 on the on the sides, on the sides of their heads. In the in the little black hats, all right, in the black suits, you know, they're going to be cut off by slaughter, man, and rightfully so, because look at what the hell they're doing to our people, you know. Verse ten, it says, "For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever." All right, so there you go, for thy violence against thy brother Jacob, because once again, going back to Genesis the twenty fifth chapter, Esau eat him. All right, these these little pink devils, they they lit they are our literal brothers. They are our literal brothers. 
you know, from, from the womb of Rebecca. Those are our literal brothers. Both of them came out of Isaac. Esau came out first. Jacob came out second. All right. But what? We're, we're still a two, we're still two totally different people, man. All right. Two men are people separated from from Rebecca's womb. Jacob and Esau. Okay. So for his and for Esau's violence against Jacob, which is going on to this very day, all right, he's going to be cut off forever. And that's going to happen in the kingdom after a thousand years, man. All right. But um, that concludes, you know, the history of Albany. Lord's willing, this was edifying, you know, to the uh, to the hopeful elect and, you know, brothers and sisters, Akin Wakwathiam, who hearken. I'm going to say, Shalom.